Hi there, everyone. And again, we've got another opportunity to speak to a really marvellous expert in her field. Um, somebody that I think will help you a lot, has some great information. And that's because so many of you talk about who you are and how invisible you feel, how you feel that you're neglected and unnoticed, and how do you pick yourselves up and start again? How do you get people to um, listen to you? But also when you're at work and you're thinking of all the changes that you're thinking of making, I know lots of you want to start fresh, um, you want to start new businesses, you want to start new ventures, you want to relocate. It's how do you reimagine yourself? How do you redesign yourself as you project yourself out into the world? So I know these are lots of things going on with you all. So I've invited my long-standing friend Sarah Grant here, who is a wonderful image consultant and I know she's got lots of fabulous information to share with us today. Hi Sarah, how are you? Hi Victoria, I'm well thank you. So thank you for having me here. It's always exciting to talk about image. I mean you could go on for hours about it but yeah no it's great. Thank yes you. and uh, you're looking very bright and colourful today that's wonderful really livens us up in this um this sort of day and age when we're very sort of inward thinking I think some some of us are hit by the old um, coronavirus and all the things that have been going on. And um, so the, a little bit of colour and a little bit of life is important. It is, and that's why I've got this top on this colour. This top really, I love, it's got everything about it, so yeah. Yeah, so it really suits you. So um, as I said in my introduction, Sarah, the um, a lot of my clients, a lot of people watching this video will be thinking, how do I make myself noticeable? And so can we just start by thinking, what, why is it so important for us to feel that we need a sense of identity? What is it about a woman coming through or going from menopause, reaching a certain stage in their life where they feel invisible? Why is it so important for us to re-identify ourselves? And how well, I, I'll always say it's everything in life is about the feel. So, you know, it's how we feel about our identity and, and a lot of ladies sort of lose their way they may have gone through empty nest syndrome it could be they've left work and they're coming into um, a more casual way of living so there'll be lots of different things um, and clothes don't identify just the external it's also our internal it makes a massive difference because to me it's everything is about how we feel. So when you know clients come to me and, and they've sort of lost their way, we, we always work with the internals first. Saying that, um, when you work with the internals, it can take a lot of time to work on that and it can take weeks and months. Um, but if you work, work on the external, and you know that you've got your colors are right, the stars are right, your, um, the wardrobe personality, hair and makeup, that can propel us forward to feeling good as well as looking. So it'll always be the feel first um, and that will perpetuate and move you forward. Then maybe looking more to the internal dialogue as well. So they both work in unison with each other. So yes, it's about confidence, you know, we know that when we put something on and we feel good, we stand tall, we look, we feel better. You know, people approach us differently because they see this confidence inside of you. I know once when someone said, how did you get from where you were to how you are now? And it was because I felt so much more confident in myself, in who I was. Mm -hmm. I knew I looked good and I felt absolutely fabulous. Um, and we all have those days. I have them when I'm at home and we don't feel so good. And I always say to people, dress how you want to feel and not how you're feeling. Brilliant. That's uh, very good. Mm. It is such an empowering thing. And we all feel like it. Don't you think it's just because I'm an image consultant? I don't have those bad days. I do. I mean, I've, I mean, I've been through the menopause. I'm post-menopause now. Um, so I know how women are feeling. I don't know how they in particular feel, but I have got a sense of understanding. Mm. So yes, cl clothes are a big 
um, identity. And I always say for somebody, look, finding your wardrobe personality is so important because if I had a dramatic wardrobe personality, they are somebody that is big and bold and they'll walk into a room, they hold themselves well, and it gives you a sense of who they are as internally as well as externally. Whereas if you've got somebody who's natural, they don't okay, worry about makeup or hair, they're very relaxed. I will know that will give me an indication of a little bit about maybe their personality. It's not set in stone, but it just yeah. gives you a sense of identity. And when we feel confident um, and smiling, we smile. And to me, that's one of our best assets is smiling. So, so do, do people have a combination of styles then? Or, or are we all set in one mode? No, because... I have tick sheets and there's there's dramatic, there's natural, there's classic, I mean, and romantic. And it's funny because what just asking questions, I start picking up. I'm thinking, hmm, hmm. And I had one lady, she was a natural, but when I gave her the sheets, I knew she was in between the two. She said, I'm natural, but I want to be a gamine. So it's all very well wanting to be that. But you've got to put that effort and, and knowing it's congruent with you. So nobody is generally just one personality. There might be elements of others coming in, but you'll often define that you are more one than the others. And so, so what, what is a gamine then? And what was the other one? Okay, so a gamine, I always usually do it in a, in a, um, in a, uh, uh, I'm standing up. It's somebody that is a classic with a twist. So they will want their hairstyles quite simple, easy to look after. They will put makeup on, but it's minimal. They'll often have a really nice pair of jeans and pumps, something that's simple. They might have a jacket, but it might have epilepsy on. It might have a little bit of detail. So I say it's a cross between a romantic and a classic. Right, so that's five, is it? So that's the five. Got... So you've got dramatic, natural, a classic, gamine, and romantic. And romantic, mm -hmm. I'm more romantic because I love textures, fabrics. I love the feel of things. I like details. So I've got clothes that you know I sew that I've embellished the collars. Whereas a classic would want it simple. Whereas I like the embellishment. Mm. Yeah. And so how like some, some of the ladies that I'm working with are going on to write books. They need to present themselves if they're selling and pitching a business idea. They're, they're, they're at the other end of the spectrum where they're not so um, timid about their appearance and not feeling so invisible, but they're ready to step out. And um, that's part of my job is to help them to step out. So how, how does that work? It, should we shine or should we adapt to circumstances and situations? I think you have to go with what feels right for you. And if you want to step up and shine, you you know, wearing those clothes, the colours that are right for you, um, the style that's right for you, the personality of the clothing, um, hair and makeup. I always say it's about the grooming. You know, you could put somebody in an outfit that's worth a thousand pounds. If they're, and, um, and then you could put somebody in an outfit that's 100. Well, if the girl that's in the 100 pounds outfit, she has got a little bit of makeup on her, hair's done, her shoes look clean, she's standing confident and she's smiling. And if the other lady, really expensive outfit, expensive shoes, bags, isn't smiling, she hasn't groomed herself properly and she's standing like this, she won't get that job if it was like for an interview process. So it's about that inner, it's always about our inner confidence, but clothes can really help, help that and then start with the internal work. So it's a bit of both, it's balancing scales. Mm. So how, how would um, somebody just watching this now, what would they do? Would they go and look in their wardrobe to decide what, what obviously they're not seeing an image consultant right now. And obviously I would recommend everybody gives you a chat, has a chat with you. Sarah or someone like you but um 
I think um, when you first hear these ideas or you've we've been reminded of these ideas, perhaps it's time to look in your own wardrobe. What would what would a lady typically go and look for in her wardrobe at the moment? So we hear about these micro, micro wardrobes and things. Is, is this a good idea? What, what should she look for? It depends on you. And it's a bit like when people say a capsule wardrobe, everyone thinks of a capsule wardrobe as a pair of jeans, a pair of black trousers, a shirt, jacket, blah, blah, blah. All very well, that's you. Your capsule wardrobe is radiated to you entirely. So you might be somebody that will never wear a pair of trousers, but you like jeans. So you know, when, so when you're doing, looking at your wardrobe now, because it's quite an emotional thing, because lots of ladies have emotional items that they don't want to get rid of. And I always say, keep them. I've got a cardigan in underneath my bed that's over 40 years old mm -hmm. and for the motion it holds I will never get rid of that ever so it's you know I do assure them that they we don't get rid of things that have emotional attachment but I always say to people if you're going to do it look at your clothes one by one either put them on a rail if you've got a rail otherwise you're going to take them out of your wardrobe and look at it do I love it if you're humming and hawing you put it in a pile, which I don't know. So you have three piles, one I love, one I hate, one I don't know. So the ones that you love are always going to go back into the wardrobe. The ones that you hate and they don't bring you joy, they're going to go. So charity, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's the ones I'm not sure about is when I work with clients is mm -hmm. let's see. And I always look at the reasons why you love it, the reasons why you hate it, I'm not sure. So they're not what sure ones are the ones that often get more attention because can we put those with something that you love and make new outfits? Because mm -hmm. using your imagination to make new outfits. Mm -hmm. So, and then I always have little lots of hints and tips, things we can use in the wardrobe to segregate your black jeans from your black trousers. Because, you know, you go into your wardrobe and you see all these black trousers and you think, well, what's what? <laughs> And it makes it really difficult. I had one lady, she had a shelf and she had three pairs of black jeggings, three of navy. They were all the same style because she loved them so much. But she could never figure out which was the black and which was the navy. Mm -hmm. So we made a pile of black, pile of navy. And on the front of the, um, the shelf, I put stickers, navy jeggings black jeggings so she knew which were which and she knew where to put them so it's mm -hmm. all those little tips and people think oh it's quite anal i said but it takes you a couple of minutes mm -hmm. whereas how long does it take you to find all that stuff in your wardrobe so when it's organized and everything works it's just so much easier and some people have a winter wardrobe and a summer wardrobe don't they? and they change they pack them away Okay. Um, is that something you would, would advise? Is that helpful to, for someone? For, or do we change our identity in the seasons? I mean, I, I'm far more um, floaty and feminine in the summer than I am in the winter, for example. And um, I'm out more in the summer. Well, so your identity won't, won't change because it will still be there. I mean, I'm a bit like you. I love the summer because I love the bright tops, simple, easy, little crop trousers. In the winter, it's the jeans and I love big chunky jumpers but they're still within my wardrobe personality but yes I mean I always separate real summer things from winter and I've got an ottoman so I put them under my bed if you struggle with space get those vacuum packed um, bags where you can suck all the air out I love those um, so yes I mean some things can cross over because you can layer things and I always keep little vest tops out in the in the um winter i've got one under here now it's thermal and i'll always keep my long thin sleeved thermals in the summer because they're the odd day that you need them so you will cross bits and pieces over mm -hmm. but real mm -hmm. summer t-shirts and things i always put my stuff away it's interesting because the idea of wearing thermal sounds like a real old lady and i know that some of some of the issues that the, the, the clients i have is they they're afraid of being older they don't want to look frumpy they want to be youthful looking but they don't want to look um out like mutton dressed as lamb so it's finding that fine balance have you got any advice for women who oh, yeah. before, i'm not going to wear a thermal but you're saying no you can wear a pretty thermal underneath 
I know, and I know what you mean about thermal, because even though I think thermal, and I always tell people, take that, that out of your head. Uh, and I think it's becoming one of those things because Marks and Spencer sell them. They've got some really lovely ones. I always go to Uniglow um, because they do different necklines, which is good because I need low neckline because I've got boobs. So it's, it's, it is a mindset thing. It's like some people don't like wearing certain colours because it reminds them of something and it's a bit like spout in school. <laughs> yeah, schools, it's, the, it's the navy blue, the navy blue um, piggy knickers. <laughs> I know. I had a friend who that green really suited her, but she would never wear green because that was her school uniform. But yeah. it, it, it looked stunning on her. It really is her colouring was great. Yes. Yeah, so how how do we get um, confident enough to to adapt or change or turn over our wardrobe so that we can feel youthful and not mutton dressed as lamb and and not stay in locked in a time warp where we're back in. 20 years ago, 30 years ago in style? Well, it's exploring. Yes, it can be a bit of a hard journey because you do get locked in those ways. I can only wear this and only wear that. It's like I've got a friend who's my age and she still wears the blue eyeshadow, you know, that shiny blue eyeshadow. And even though I've done the makeup, she still reverts back to it. So, yeah, I think, you know, an age thing, you know, I had... Um, I've had clients saying, I don't like getting older and it's this, that and the other. And I said, well, let's change that. And they say, how? I said, be grateful that you are the age you are because so many people don't get to that age. And that has been a real impact on people because they thought, yeah, embrace it. You know, you either going to make yourself miserable about it mm. or you're going to embrace it. And people say about, oh, I mean, I'm nearly 64. And I said, it's not because I look great it's because I feel good I like being me I like what I represent I like my I love my clothes you know and so yeah if you don't love any item your items of your clothing just get rid of them don't put them in the bin whatever you do because I love sustainability just yeah. go and take them to a charity shop but another really good thing if you've got a group of friends and you're all similar sizes do a swap party because what's old to you is going to be new to somebody else mm, good ideas I think one of the things that I found was that um I, I lacked confidence to go shopping um not knowing because I put weight on over lockdown um I, I don't, I've actually lost about an inch in height <laughs> you know okay, apparently. Changed. <laughs> um, my coloring has changed a little bit and um so those kind of things, and I think when I walk into a shop, I think, oh, my God, because I, I, I lost confidence, especially when I was very menopausal and I felt bloated and all those kind of things. Um, so it was, what, what do you offer? I know you run retreats and, and do you go shopping with people? Can you help them hold their hand while they make a few choices? I do. And it's funny because a little while ago I had a lady phoning up about wanting me to take her daughter shopping. And I told her the process because I, you've always got to start with colour and then style. And I will never, you know, I could have said, yes, I'll take you shopping, but I'd have been taking her blind. So I never do that. So I always say, you've got to start with colour. That's the first thing you see when you wake up in the morning is colour. And it's the mm -hmm. first thing you see when you go into shop. So I will go into shop. Let's take TK Maxx, which you either love or hate, like Marmite. So you'll either go in, my eyes will scan. If I can see the colours that I love that bring me joy, I'll go over to that item. I always look at the neckline first, depending. If it was a big baggy jumper, it's not so important. But because I've got boobs, I'll always make sure the neckline is right. And then I will look at the personality of the item of clothing. I look at the length because my tops need to be slightly longer because through menopause, my waist is thickened. Where I could use wear tops that fitted me, I have the muffin, so I know what that's like. So the way I dress is slightly different to what it was before, but still keeping congruent with who I am. Then if I love everything about it, I'll try it on. If I love it, if I keep questioning it, I will never buy it because you'll have that piece of item of clothing in your wardrobe 
Mm. And you'll question it the same as you did in the shop and you'll never take it out. That's good advice. That's good. That's good. So a client has said to me, when I take, I do take them shopping and I will always keep them within their personality. I will always take them slightly out of their comfort zone because I know that something might look really good on them. Mm. Um, I never take them way out because what was the point? There's no point having me um, do styling for them. Um, and it is, it's just amazing the difference when you take them slightly out of their comfort zone um, and, and the, the difference it makes and, and, and letting them see. Because I always say the shopping is where the magic happens. You know, I give you those tools um, about colour and style. And it, again, it's not instantaneous. It's something you're constantly working on. Uh, and you have to evolve your style because style doesn't just happen. You know, people will see personalities, know, actresses, whatever, and they try and emulate that person. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't always work. It's no, fine no. if it's you. But what's the point of trying to be somebody you're not? You need to be you and you dress for you. Don't mm -hmm. dress for anybody else. Mm -hmm. It's about you. So can you tell us a little bit more about this idea of a retreat? I've never heard of an image consultant running retreats. So what, what, what happens in a retreat? Talk me through that. What would I, if I come to you, Sarah, what will I experience? What will I okay. have? Well, okay, I'll just tell you a quick, quick story because it was Ali Harold that told me I should go on the Great British Bake Off. Obviously, because I had my other passion is cooking and baking. I applied, but that was my light bulb moment. And I thought, why don't I put all my passions together and do the retreats and obviously it hit about a year before COVID and obviously I did do one last year when we were able to so hopefully back so you'll come to me um you'll have your own bedrooms and you'll have a full color analysis and style um analysis so it's a very full-on day you get to me at 9 30 coffee it's all homemade cakes homemade bread I've even made homemade jam there I've asked the jam mm -hmm. so uh, to me it's all about the experience and the feel you know I have lovely beautiful bed linen um, everybody has a lovely fluffy um, dressing gowns slippers they've even got things they can put over their shoulders I know that might make them feel old that you can heat up so how, um, many people, how many people do you have at a time how many clients do you have at maximum time? two oh it's um, only two yeah, because so it's, intimate, it's got to be very intimate. So the day is full on. People bring clothes they love, clothes they hate. They can bring shoes with them. And then we go through all of that. And then um, they can like, after about, usually finish about five, whenever it, it finishes. And then they can either go for a lovely walk. They can go and have a bath using all the lovely tropic products, which are 100% natural or they can sit while I'm cooking. I've done a lot of prep work before um, and they've got wine. And then the evening, the conversation goes wherever it goes. I don't hope, when I say I'm still hosting, but I don't host what happens there. I mean, sometimes if it's winter, we can go and put the log fire on. It's whatever they want to do. And you know, we always end up sitting around the table, just chatting. Um, and it's lovely, you know, really nice. And then the next morning, um, hair wash. And because my background for many, many years ago was hairdressing, I was going to be a teacher and ended up hairdressing. Um, I teach them how to blow dry their hair because you'll go to a hairdresser's, but nobody will ever teach you. Um, and it's, you know, if you need root lift, all different things, I've got the most amazing hair dryer called the Big Head Fabulous Hair Dryer. So I'll do it, but they do it as well, because there's no point me doing it, because how are they going to learn? You know, if they, you know, got problems. And then we all turn up to the table with no makeup on. I turn up as well. Um, and then we have a makeup tutorial. So they're doing it. Obviously, I'm helping them as well, um, because they need to be able to replicate that look when they go home. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have another light lunch and the ladies depart. Um, I don't do the shopping for a few reasons because there's so much going on. I would rather leave a gap, let them learn about the colours, explore it a bit and then be ready to go shopping. 
sounds really different and very um, engaging, informative, but also very helpful. I think for, for that kind of personal service, it's incredible. So that sounds really lovely. Yeah, and, I, um, I, I had yeah. a lady who came last year and she came on her own and she'd been watching me on Instagram and it was so lovely. And I, we, we still keep in contact. She'll throw me pictures of clothing and Sarah about this. So I'm always in contact with them. And yeah. as you know, Jennifer um, has become a really good friend. So yeah, I, I just, yes, fabulous. Mm -hmm. That's great. So can you tell me then, how, how will everybody find you then? You said you're on Instagram. Can you give us your contact details and your website, etc., and how you work on social media? Do you, want me to put that in, do, you, do you want me to put it in the chat? No, if you could just tell us now. Okay. Yeah. It's www.sarahjanegrant.co.uk. Um, that's my website. So all the, the details on there. And I always offer people, you know, every uh, Zoom call just to see how I can help them and see, you know, two people have got to get on. And you, you know that when you work with people, it's all about people by people. It's about the feel. Everything, again, is about the feel. Mm. So, yes, and, they can and it sounds to me as if people come in pairs, like the friends or mother and daughter, etc. Um so where can they find you on Instagram then? What's your address for Instagram? It's Sarah Grant Image Consultant. And Facebook? Are you on Facebook or LinkedIn? Sarah Grant Image Consultant. Um, I can always send you the... Um, I'll put them underneath in the comments. The links and on LinkedIn. It's more Instagram and, 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 and Facebook. I find that is more me. Well, Instagram is so visual, isn't it? And um, I know that um, if everybody wants to check Sarah out on Instagram, that she does some <laughs> fantastic videos and your humour comes through. And I think Instagram is particularly good for finding um, someone's personality and their family. It is. But for, for me and for, I know some of the clients I've got in mind at the moment, it's, it's about making change, embracing the change that's happening and occurring or has occurred and refreshing yourself and rejuvenating yourself so that you can move forward in the places that you want to, but not complete makeover, but just to Thank enhance you. or be brave and like you say, work on the inner self to build confidence. Yeah. I, I always think that some people don't know me because I take my dog for a walk and I've got dog walking clothes <laughs> and it's often cold, it's early morning and it's just all thrown on with the, with the coat on and I'm kind of like in disguise. I do usually wear makeup but quite often I don't and I think I'm, I'm wandering around like a little old lady and my dog and they're all muddy and we get home and then I've got a lunch date or I've got a business date and I have to get all done up and I just feel so good. And, yeah. And then that's what I want for my clients. And I know you want that for your clients, that the, the power of clothing, the power of your stance and your position. For yeah, and, it, and it's funny, Victoria, because in lockdown, you know, lots of people were doing Zoom and they'd turn up, maybe we're not quite so groomed, but, you know, with maybe a, a blouse or whatever. But on the bottom, they'd have their PJs on, slippers. Mm -hmm. And I tried that once out of... Well, I didn't, I had, um, I had slippers on. I don't wear PJs. And um, I felt horrible. Mm. I, I knew my top half wasn't in unison with my bottom half. Yes. So even on a Zoom call, turn up as if you were going to be um, a, on a presentation. Mm. Yeah, so I quite agree. I, I definitely agree. I learned that many years ago when I was in sales, that um, when you're on the phone and you're going to, call someone you get dressed for the part you you get dressed and not ready for it you know or a, a telephone interview if you're interviewing for a job on the telephone which is quite common dress for the job because you feel you know just fantastic for doing it so I think that's great Sarah thank you very much for all your thank tips you, and your insights um I, I feel that uh, this has been a lot of help and I hope it ignites for everybody that's watching, I hope it ignites some hope in you if you feel lost and some inspiration in you if you're just curious and ready to go. And if you've already made some changes, then maybe you'd yeah. like to take it further. And I do recommend Sarah, that's why I've asked her to come along today, 
So it's um, Sarah Grant. So thank you, Sarah. That's one thank you, Victoria. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And uh, we'll gather again sometime soon. Yes. Bye for now. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.